Good morning again, and this is another one in my uh, little little mini series from uh, La Paz. Uh, this is a ride. This is riding to uh, a Balandra Beach or Playa Balandra. Um, absolutely gorgeous ride. Um, that's a that's a different beach there, but there's all these little beaches along the way on both sides. There's little lakes, and it's quite stunning to be honest. Um, <coughs> So basically, it's a 40 mile ride uh, to the beach. Um, it's um, very pretty, picturesque, picturesque um, uh, ride. And uh, yeah, I heard about, you know, there's, you know, TripAdvisor has, you know, you've got to go visit this beach and, and you'll love it and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, so I decided to take a little ride out there there was a few trucks along the way because uh, the the second reason why I, I came out here was I wanted to check out the, the ferry terminal just so that I got my bearings right, looked at the time, how long it took, um, yeah, everything that I that I would want to uh, want to know about about the uh, the trip. So with because the ferries out here you get a few trucks, but you know once I got past where the ferry terminal was. It's only about 30 minutes, 20, 20, 30 minutes from La Paz. Um, had a look around there, spoke to one of the, 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 um, the one of the um, border security people there, uh, and he told me exactly what I need to do and when I need to get here, and he was a really cool guy. Um, and, and the process that I had to go through. Um, so I basically um, got my uh, a vehicle import permit and all that. So you don't have to get the import permit in. Uh, you don't have to have an import permit in Baja. Um, you can get it, but you do need it when you cross into uh, Greater Mexico. Um, although, again, not once anyone ever checked me for it. You pay 400 US dollars for it. And you get that back when you exit. Um, <coughs> but you do need it to exit. Um, exit the country with you with your moto um, but it was an absolutely gorgeous ride out there I left pretty much first thing first light and, uh, and decided that uh, yeah so I just wanted to get to the beach and you know it was, it was already quite warm so you know go get to the beach I had all my riding gear on but I underneath it I had my um, had my swimming we call them swimming tops in Australia, um, and uh, yeah, get out there and get in, get in amongst it, and uh, a bit of a swim. I also bought my my uh, drone with me um, to get some drone footage, and um, there's another little beach along the way again. It's really, really stunning little location. So pretty. There was a few people around. There's a few people staying, obviously uh, camping on the beach. I saw a couple of four-wheel drives that have been camping. But it's pretty empty, you know. Um, but that's the beauty of La Paz is you can get to so many places from La Paz, and and you got you got a lot to do. It, it's absolutely, I mean, it's, it is quite stunning. Uh, the beauty of the place, um, and the road, the roads riding around were pretty good fun, you know. So there's a couple of little people, a couple of people there, mostly locals there, but. Um, yeah, so I was going to give my air, do air dog drone a, a, a run. Uh, air dogs, are, it's a, it was a Kickstarter funded campaign. I didn't purchase mine on Kickstarter. I actually got mine way before a lot of people on Kickstarter because they had promised. Uh, they had promised. Here's the, you know, I've got to tell you about another thing. You can see the little flies on the screen. They were freaking everywhere, and uh, I was just setting my cameras up. I have my Olympus uh, camera. Um, setting that up uh, with the microphone, uh, going to do a little little bit of a chat. Um, but uh, the flies were insane. Uh, I've never had, I've never actually witnessed it before like that. They were little tiny little tiny little insect type things, but they were freaking annoying. And as soon as I once I stopped, I started sweating. And once I started sweating. Here's me setting up the drone now. So with the air dog, what you have to do, the flies, it's amazing. Um, 
With the air dog, what you've got to do is every time you've got to recalibrate it. Um, and you've got to sit there and you've got to go through these steps, which is, you know, if it works every time, it's fine. You know, it's a five minute job. However, um, it never took five minutes. Like, it all, there was always something that had to be recalibrated. Um, and as the trip went on, like I used the drone twice here in La Paz, uh, on my trips in La Paz, but as the trip went on, it just and I used it once in um, in oh, that's you can see the ferry terminal there. This is me exiting. Um, I used it once um, in Colombia, and then the the two really big ones I wanted, which was the the Salt Flats of Uni, and also Death Road, it just wouldn't fly. It just kept coming and saying, "Please check magnometer, please check this, recheck this," and like 45 minutes later, you know had to just give up you know it's it was quite annoying and uh, hopefully they do something about it because it is when it's when it's running it is a great drone and everything is really good about it the, the build quality is strong it's a sort of plastic type thing but it's a very strong and it folds up to a pretty minimalist size you know for what any drone can be and they've got some more competition now with the Mavic drone and <coughs> There's one from DJI and also one from uh, GoPro that are, that are portable drones and they're going to have some problems. The only way they can survive their dog is keeping the current one and just making it better, not bringing out a second version because they've had so many issues with the first one. Uh, this is where the ferry terminal is. Just go in there and it's on the right hand side but you've got to get the permits in the main building first um, before you're allowed to go onto the boat. Uh, through the other area. But uh, if AirDog just concentrated on making what they have better, making the software better, and just releasing this version, allowing it for, you know, probably um, allowing it for each and different, because you need a GoPro with it as well. Um, there serves a military checkpoint again. He ends up waving me by. Um, uh, but uh, if they just concentrate on that for three or four years and just making it better and better and better, they'll have the best follow drone out there because GoPro will definitely release a new one, then another one. They'll always have little issues. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, in fact, DJI helped uh, AirDog out. You know, they, they gave them a lift up and, and with their technology because there were so many issues with it. Uh, I already lost one, one just disappeared on me. But now it seems to be a lot more stable. But I just had so many issues getting it running, um, and they've really got to work on that, uh, uh, that making that a, a, a lot more of a seamless process. I mean, you really should be able to do most of the setup checks um, at home, and then just go through the final checklist when you go. And it's just got to make that process better because the drone, drone won't fly under many different circumstances, and that's a bit, that's going to be an issue. This is riding back into into La Paz. Um, very pretty, very pretty place. I don't know how busy it gets during the peak season because uh, I'm not a big flat fan of massive places with lots of tourists and stuff like that. It can become pretty painful, uh, but it is a beautiful spot. I mean, you can you can swim there. There's little little bits of sand there and stuff like that, but. The best beaches are, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes away. Uh, but I, you know, just absolutely love the place. It's not a massive city. Um, I didn't feel unsafe there at all. You know, just like any normal city. There's a lot of bikers that come here from the US, uh, mainly Harley riders and stuff like that, that go across to the mainland and Maz Mazatlan. Um, but it is a, a great spot and uh, I highly recommend a visit because you can do so much from there. Um, you can go whale, diving with the whale sharks, you can go out with the, with the seals, um, you can go, there's amazing fishing out there. I do hope they do protect the fishing. And, and, and anywhere where you're allowed deep net fishing and stuff like that, Large in fishing on fishing boats, you, you find that 
they eventually fish out the area and it becomes a barren wasteland and I hope they don't do that here. I hope they really try to protect the waters and the, and the, fish, the, the local fishing industry as long as they're small, you know, because all the big guys will want to come in when there's good fish and come in and just rape the waters and uh, you just don't want that. Um, they do have also have some, uh, uh, some fish farming there. Not a huge fan, but I understand why it's done. Um, but a really pretty place, lots of restaurants, hotels, bars, and all that sort of stuff. And I'm sure it gets pretty crazy during the uh, during the peak season uh, in the, in this town. Um, but I mean, it is a little bit protected because the only international airport is probably about two hours away. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, but uh, that, that means that you're not getting a massive influx of tourists uh, there and it makes it a little bit harder to get to, which makes it better. And Cabo San Lucas ends up being the big tourist, touristy spot there because you're just flying in and out from the US in an hour or so. Um, but yeah, the, the food here was fantastic. The local food, n not, so, not, not as much street food as I'd like, but there's places along the, the streets that actually just, like a house just opened up and put some Bay Marie's out the front with some beautiful food, you know. It was fantastic. Everything was fresh, and uh, yeah, and Leo and uh, Rummy, the people who run Leo's Baja Oasis, uh, they pointed me to some pretty cool places to have something to eat. And it's cheap, it's cheap as chips as well. I mean, you're not paying much at all for anything really. Um, and it's you know pretty a lot of hostels here as well. Uh, and here, I think I'm coming up to the drone footage here of Blandra Beach. So Blandra Beach is. Uh, about 40 miles out, and you can see it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty gorgeous. Um, it's like a mini lagoon, um, and, and really pretty. Um, I suggest you visit this place, and, but make sure, 100% sure, you are. Uh, look at that, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Turquoise waters, white sands, um, plenty of places if you get there early enough to, to reserve a really cool spot. Really cool spot. But, uh, Absolutely stunning location. Here's some of the, these are some of the other beaches along the way there. Um, it's a pretty touristy sort of spot there. But um, yeah, absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I, I, I really, really, really recommend going to La Paz and spending a good a good week or two there. And uh, if, you, if you can afford to stay at, uh, at the at Leo's Baja Oasis, it's only $100 a night, but uh, yeah well worth it, especially for young people and people on motorbikes because you can park your bikes inside as well. So there you go. Any questions or comments below, just as usual. Thanks guys.